Welcome to the People and Performance Podcast, featuring guest experts from such global brands as NASA, Salesforce, the Milwaukee Bucks, Staples Professional, IBM, Mutual of America, Zero, and Simon Sinek Inc. The show offers expert insights into the strategic capabilities and behaviors needed to grow and sustain employee performance. Thanks for checking out this episode of the People and Performance Podcast. Hey, this is Bill Bannum, show co-host and editor over at the HR Gazette. In this episode, we're going to consider ways to ensure a connected, inclusive and performance orientated culture in a changed world of work. Our guest this time is Lauren Waters, Talent Experience Manager, Americas at Xero accounting software that provides tools for small businesses, accountants, and bookkeepers. Lauren understands the processes of trying to land a job in the tech industry and has first-hand experience of what sticks and what doesn't. Chris and I hope that you enjoy this conversation we had with Lauren. And if you do, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Welcome, Lauren. Bill and I are glad to have you on the on our podcast today. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and where you come from and what you're believing in and, and what you're doing right now. Absolutely. Um, so Guelph-based, two hours out of Toronto, but uh, attached to the Toronto office of Zero. I've been here for about four and a half years. I'm talent manager, which means I manage eight different recruiters all across Canada and the U.S., been in the recruitment game for over a decade now, really, really obsessed with people, people outcomes, um, and diversity and inclusion is a big uh, love of mine as well. So that's my focus and how I spend my time day to day right now. Excellent. We appreciate that. Okay. So let me get this question for you here. How has the growth of the gig economy and the need for more accounting software for our startups over the past few years impacted zero? We're kind of in this interesting time for cloud accounting. We've seen it um, really, really boom in different um, markets around the world. We know Australia, New Zealand, the UK are all much more cloud forward when it comes to their small businesses and accounting in general. In Canada and the US at the moment, we're a little bit lagging behind and we see small businesses, gig economists really sitting within two camps right now. First of all, we see them moving more towards technology-enabled businesses. So, you know, moving from just a brick-and-mortar store to e-commerce, um, looking for different channels and alternative revenue, um, and at the same time, also <laughs> being a little bit scared or unsure or overwhelmed by the uh, choices that they have in the cloud space. They know that technology is the right way to go for them, um, but taking that initial leap, <laughs> we're still in that early adopter phase within this market. So we know, um, based on some research that we've done this year, that essentially six out of 10 are feeling overwhelmed about the information about different technology solutions that they have, um, but they know that it's the right way to go. For that, what we're seeing right now is people partnering a little bit closer with their accountants and bookkeepers, with other small business owners or gig economists who have found the right solution for them. But I think the takeaway message is change is coming <laughs> in this market for sure. And it's going to enable people to be more proactive to have a better insight on their business and control of it as well. Um, I think the really exciting thing, even though you know you can look at it and feel very overwhelmed by some of the really great solutions that are out there, but if you haven't gone on to uh, the cloud before, if you haven't used technology to enable your business and you're launching a business or uh, a new gig for the first time, you're at this really exciting point where you can actually design your business around the type of solution that you're going to be using and and do that in tandem. It's almost like getting a fresh start as opposed to having to retrofit something later on. So um, really exciting to see those types of opportunities coming up both within Canada and the U.S. I love that, that fresh start of just, you know, helping design your world versus having to do over all the time. So great, great feedback. This is exciting. sounds exciting, especially for the U.S. and Canada. Absolutely. A big, big change coming. And again, I think uh, really exciting about the way that it's going to impact customers as well. Excellent. The People and Performance Podcast, supported by Fidelo Inc., 
is dedicated to offering tips and expert insights into the strategic capabilities and behaviors needed to establish, grow, and measure the performance of employees. If you enjoy the show, why not subscribe and give us five stars through your favorite podcast app. Hey, Lauren, you and I, we've gotten to know each other pretty well in 2022, I'd say. Uh, I've got huge bags of respect for you. I think you are an awesome human being. So context being listeners, uh, Lauren and I have been uh, producing and hosting events at the Zero office in in downtown Toronto, beautiful Toronto. Uh, and in September 2022, you moderated a panel at the office uh, or for, a, for a summit called the Agility Reimagined Summit. And uh, the session was called being a connected and supportive culture in the future of work and it considered how we can ensure a connected inclusive and performance orientated culture in a more tech enabled and remote work environment can you take a couple of minutes now and tell listeners about some of the issues that the panel covered um, and by the way listeners we had some really cool panelists on there including Gillian Stein who is the uh, CEO over at Henry's the camera folks thanks for that Bill i um, to be honest that night was it really shifted a lot of thoughts that I had had in that space, things that I had been kind of mulling over over the course of the pandemic, um, really uh, also solidified for the audience a couple of key themes that I keep coming back to in my own day-to-day -day work. I think one of the things that the panelists all brought up and were really strong beside is that we've moved into a space where customization for employees and flexibility for employees is really front and center to how you can enable a performance-driven culture. Um, gone are the days where you can create a one-size-fits-all benefits plan or a one-size-fits-all uh, set of work hours to get the most out of your employees. And um, being able to work with those top performers and recognize the key areas of the business that, um, that you want to protect and serve, making sure that you are taking in requests and thinking about them on more of a case-by-case -case basis than a blanket statement has been really key for them in retaining the top talent within their business, but also enabling it, um, enabling people to do the best work. So, for example, for those who are juggling parental needs and uh, have inconsistency with school right now with different um, closures and so forth, letting people shift their hours around that or complete some of their work remotely in order to make ends meet means that they can show up for work in a more rested, focused, uh, centered space to do their best work. So that was really interesting. And it, it was really across the board for all of our panelists that the more that you can focus on customization and meeting people where they're at, being flexible um, is, is really central to success. Another thing that the panelists really drove home is that no one has nailed the um, the balance in between remote, hybrid, on site yet. It's it's a world that we are still um, wading through and making mistakes in and learnings in uh, pretty much every day. Um, the panelists were all pretty much in agreement, though, of two things. One, um, really important to be mindful about the time that you're asking employees to be in person. Think about the actions that are really, really important. And Jillian Stein uh, gave a great summary of this. Essentially, don't do the normal things that you would do within the office. Don't switch back and just expect that you're opening doors and um, people are just going to go back to doing work the way that they used to in the office. Think more about how you can use that as central connecting times or as ways to tie back to the vision of the organization, get them to meet customers, make that time really, really meaningful and impactful so that when employees are asked to be in the office, there's a meaning and purpose for how and why they're doing that work in person as opposed to asynchronously. So that was really easy, interesting to see. And then the other piece um, that we talked about was on the diversity and inclusion front and asking people to come back into the office and what potential impacts that could have and um, how you balance out those pieces and make sure that certain groups aren't being left behind in that space as well. So yeah, definitely been thinking and reflecting a lot on those conversations. There's still lots that's unknown, but so great to get HR leaders together in a room in one space to to learn from each other so that we're not all kind of independently chasing these these separate mountains and if i haven't said so so far you're a great moderator by the way uh you you, you did a great job 
and, the, and you were very engaging and, and the way that you brought in the audience there I, I thought was was very impressive because I've had a chance to work with you and I've had a chance to chat with several members of the team over at zero I've, I've got a bit of a sense of uh, the fact that they're they're pretty cool people they're, they're nice folks that you work with Lauren um, <laughs> they, they they seem to enjoy what they do and they're very welcoming and friendly and and so on well, why do you believe it's important that candidates in, in, in that period when, when you're when you're looking to bring new people on to join the zero team why why do you think that candidates they they need to demonstrate that they care about the culture fit with a potential employer's brand and perhaps you can also share what can be aligned but what kind of aligned values do for employee engagement and productivity levels so if if somebody's on board with the mission they're happy etc what does that then mean for potential productivity levels absolutely as a recruiter, I've always thought, um, and, and many people I think think this, that an interview process is about a company selecting an, an employee, a new member of, of their group, and at the same time, the employee choosing the, um, the company back. And I think at the heart of your question is really the employee value proposition. What is an employee going to get coming to join Zero or any other company? Um, in in exchange for the the awesome work and attitude that they're going to put out um, during during their time together, and we know that having a really solid EVP that accurately reflects the work that you can do um, can reduce turnover um, significantly. And so, for us at Zero, it's about being really clear about who we are, what we want to achieve, and really making sure that that's, that information is available for the candidate. You know, in the um, branding material that we put out, in the conversations that they're having with interviewers and um, with the recruiters themselves, that it's apparent in our work strategy as well, so that an employee can, a future employee can see and opt in or out on whether or not that's going to be the right fit and the right match for them. Because not every employer is going to be the right match for every employee. For example, at Zero, we really focus around um, this idea of being human or, or our human value, which is about bringing a lot of authenticity and openness, positive intent into that space. Um, it allows for a lot of vulnerability within our workspace, but that's not for everyone. If you wanted to show up and work in a more consulting style um, atmosphere or a little bit more buttoned up, more hierarchical for a candidate in our interview process, they could read and see and observe that that's not something that they're going to find within the walls of zero and be able to kind of opt out and go another way. I think the values piece that you spoke about is really interesting from a performance perspective as well, because how, how I like to describe it is our values are kind of turning the wheel uh, of the car. And if we all have the same values, the wheel is um, has less friction to move forward. We don't all have to, you know, show up from the same background and um, speak the same way and so forth. Those surface level pieces um, don't really matter. It's the core values that are underneath that matter more. When we're hiring, we're not looking to find, you know, your new best friend or someone you want to spend um, you know, go for dinner <laughs> with after work. We're looking for someone who's going to challenge you professionally and be a really good partner to you professionally. And those people are going to share the same values for you and, and be trying to point the ship and work in the same direction or steer in the same direction to sort of mix my metaphors. But essentially, um, I'll take one of the zero values, which is beautiful. We're looking to create really standout experiences for our customers. And so when we're going into a room to solve a problem together, if we have, you know, the engineer, the product manager, um, the marketer, um, the coordinator, all going in, knowing that our key focus is to create a really beautiful solution, it helps us to be able to raise the bar and establish a strong way and language that we can work together on that helps us discount which solutions are going to fit within that model and which aren't, which is it's just going to drive us faster towards hitting our goals and make sure that we, again, have that sustained language to achieve together. Lauren, this is great. Thank you so much for all that you've offered to our listeners today. We appreciate that. 
it's coming to the close. Uh, we have a couple questions that we ask all of our uh, guests. So the first question I have for you is, in one minute or less, can you share one piece of advice or some direction you were given by a mentor, le leader, or colleague that inspired you to perform at a higher level in your career? Absolutely. I think the best piece of advice I've ever received is that you can always walk it back. Don't let fear from making a decision hold you back because inaction is is still a choice. And that was given to me by Nora Beatty. Um, she's a delightful HR professional in Toronto. But the idea of having that courage to go out and make a decision, even if it's the wrong one, and know that nothing is permanent in your life. You can always make small steps to course correct. You can always... Um, step back on an impact. And I, I think that's very freeing to know that no matter how big of a mistake that you make, there's always a path forward. Awesome. Love that. Great advice for everybody. Now, from the last question that I have for you today is this, where again, we're asking everybody this question that we've, we've had on since the beginning of time. So here it is. From a culture and people processes perspective, what does a high performing company mean to you? Yeah, I think a high performing company for me has changed a little bit in the last while. Before I would have said like doggedly pursuing uh, their goals and having that strong um, mission, having everything really strategically aligned. It's still that in some ways for me, but the doggedly has changed a little bit, we moved more towards the mentality of flexibility and agility. How can you pivot and steer the ship and, and change direction, tack when you need to, um, and not lose course, if that makes sense. So it it's a company that knows what it wants to do, that's focused in that direction and has its team running in that direction, but also isn't scared to challenge, to change, um, and, and to, you know, throw out what's not working and move in another direction when it's when it's needed. And just finally for today, Lauren, how can our listeners connect with you and how can they learn more about all the cool things happening over at Zero? Absolutely. Well, obviously there's Zero Careers out there, as well as we have a really, really lovely um, blog content piece called Humans of Zero. I actually am featured on there quite recently for some volunteering work I've done this year. Um, again, just such a great way to share some of the stories, the really interesting people that exist at Zero. And I wouldn't be a good recruiter if I wasn't on LinkedIn and spending most of my time there. So uh, you guys can also head over and connect with me directly on LinkedIn, and I'd be happy to have a chat. Wonderful. Well, uh, as always, I've had a lovely time chatting with you, Lauren. I always do. I always do. You're, you're, uh, you're engaging and charismatic person and um, just a nice, nice human being. So keep doing that, Lauren. Chris and I appreciate your time today. Thanks, Bill. It's been a blast. And thanks, Chris. Um, hoping to come back soon. Excellent. Thanks, Lauren. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for listening to the People and Performance Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.